when the sun rays hits our skin. That's nature's alarm clock out here on the water. We so vividly remember a time when it sounded and looked so much different. When we valued money more than time. All right, we're off. On land, it was that Monday morning alarm. The seemingly endless cycle of eat, sleep, work, repeat. Do you ever ask yourself, what's the purpose in all of this? When will I value time more than money? It's been 165 days living on board our boat, Takana, and this year has been one of the biggest opportunities of self-reflection. We left everything behind, comfort, to free herself. security. We were inexperienced, but we sailed into the unknown anyway. To feel alive, to seek the adrenaline of not knowing what's next. I can't tell the intro. Riding out the highs and the lows. The oh, big bloody fish. fish. And experiencing life. Pretty nice sailing, hey. Does it not feel like you've just woken up from a dream? So good. But as we leave the Great Barrier Reef today, it's getting harder for me to see. This whole adventure together is starting to feel like a blur. Not letting go. Oh my God. So lucky. Because John's one year break is coming to an end and the nine to five is starting to call his name. There's a big line of storms. I'm not sure if we might see that in the afternoon. Will we choose a nomadic free lifestyle or a career we've worked 13 years for? Life is in a stream. Bombies or storms? Bombies, storms, bombies, storms. What would you be more worried about? Keeping in mind we're inside an atoll. Well, we sort of know the path that we took here inside Lady Musgrave. So we're going to follow our track back out. So we are leaving in darkness because we are a little more concerned about the storms after that hair experience that we had the other day. Are we still driving? Holy. It's pretty dark out here. The sun is rising. Look at that. How are you feeling? A little bit apprehensive about leaving. Yeah, same. It's so early and there's some storms over the mainland, so. Yeah. So we're dropping our mooring. All right, we're off. Tiptoeing out of here. The captain has armed me with a torch. This light's useless, I can't see anything. It's not for the water. What is it for? He's just saying to me that the um, torch isn't for the bombies, it's for the markers. <sighs> Bit nerve wracking really, but hopefully we make it out of here. Actually, like see the coral. Hopefully if we just follow the markers, we'll be okay. You can see to the left and right, there are breaking waves over the reef. In this entire ring-shaped atoll, this is the only exit and entry point. Oh, you can see massive garbage. Wow, this is amazing. I'm trying to look out for bombies, but the sea life is just extraordinary. Stingray, getting bloody wavy up here. We did it! The first challenge, one of three. The other challenges, we're running out of fuel, plus those storms. Yeah, all going well, mate. I just got to let you know the forecast, if you haven't already got it. There's a big line of storms inland, about 150, 200 kilometres that are heading, it's sort of heading slowly to the east. It seems others have the same idea. They're leaving. It's cyclone season in this region at the moment, so we're not taking any chances. As soon as we were clear of the reef, we hoisted the sails and got moving. Today, the plan is to swing past Bundaberg for fuel as our tanks are almost empty. And then finally, we're going to stop and truly explore Gari. It's the biggest sand island in the world. Perched lakes, forests, and an epic shipwreck. Although getting there, we will experience some bumps along the way. You right, babe? Okay. Yeah. Conditions aren't ideal. Oh. Ah. Today, though, it definitely is rolling. <laughs> really should be quick, too. Yeah. Ugh, these inbound storms are causing some swell. 
And while rolling around, the horizon constantly moving, I'm playing with fire, trying to get ahead on editing our next episode. Thanks. So if you're hovering your mouse over that like button, think of me out here braving seasickness. I never feel like eating or drinking or we're sailing. I have to force myself, so I don't get dehydrated. By the way, we have some really cool people we want you to meet in Bundaberg, and we're almost there. And while this trawler was in for a big stormy night, we were getting ready to hunker down. I have to push the power on. Yeah, that's right. We've made it to the marina just in time. Every minute, the winds are literally getting stronger. It's fine. So we've tied up plenty of fenders because we know it'll get blowy this afternoon. Hold on. Keeping that in mind, we tied our lines extra tight. I'm so glad we didn't sleep in or fluff about back at the reef because it would have been an absolute nightmare to get into the marina. What was that all about? Just helping this guy get in. It's pretty windy and they gave him a blow-off bay, even though there was a blow-on bay free next to him. They did the same to us, didn't they? Yeah, not easy. No. Hopefully it's going to be right for us to get out tomorrow. We're not going to be here for long, so we're getting our errands done. Fueling up. Dirty laundry cleaned. It's always such a treat to have fresh sheets. Although you'll find out soon, they won't last long. Should last another couple of days. And it did turn out to be a soggy night. Storms definitely came. We could not have planned this stopover more perfectly. So glad we got in here. It rained and poured for hours. So much so that when we went out the next day, Bundaberg was pretty much underwater. It was flooding. Oh, flooding at the back of that house. We ventured out because we had to pick up two VIPs. G'day. My name's Quincy. I'm Archie. Our dad gave John his first piloting job. This is their dad, Andrew. He hired John to fly Cessna 210s and a 206. John was learning how to fly at 18 years old and got his first job at 1920 flying in the Northern Territory. He'd been flying gliders solo since he was 15 years old, but this was his big break into the aviation industry. He had to move here to the middle of Australia for the job to a remote indigenous community called La Jamanu. It's close closest town was hundreds of kilometers away by dirt track. This was the airport. It was so remote. We only got to see each other a couple of times that year as John built his flying hours up so he could get a job with a commercial airline. Archie was just a baby and Clancy wasn't even born when John worked out in the remote community. So it was so nice to have them on board and convert them to boat life. It's like a three bedroom apartment that yeah. sails. It's awesome. Yeah, but it was, it, I barely even knew we were on a boat. It's very stable. I don't want to live in a big mansion when I'm old because it's like, it's so big. Too big. But this was just a pit stop. So Thanks for trusting us with the kids. Yeah. So just like that. I didn't get to hug you guys. Goodbye. We were off. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to say it to Did John to me. Oh, make sure you clean you clean so you can see you. Come on, buddy. Oh, God, make the job here. Bye. Oh, that was so incredibly fun having Archie and Clancy on board. We didn't know what to expect. Obviously, we've never had kids staying on board before. But it was a breeze, so inquisitive, asking heap of questions. How's it going, Christina? Uh -huh. First time driving stick in like ages. Let's hope I don't crunch any gears today. I guess they're at like just a perfect age. Christina driving. didn't even bring a license with her today. Oh. 15 and... She does not intend on getting pulled over. 11. Although it's very likely to happen. We loved having them on board. They were just beautiful boys. We are motoring out of the channel and it is time to focus. We've officially left the Great Barrier Reef and we're heading towards the famous Great Sandy Straits. We've got to keep a lookout for sandbars here. You can easily become unstuck. Exhibit A. There was no visibility. I couldn't even see the anchor coming up. So focus. And by focus, I mean one person has to be focused. I'll have a look on the chart. This is our cockpit. This is where we spend most of our time. Babe, if he had his binoculars out, he would absolutely be able to see you right now. But today, it's probably the worst place to be on our boat. We were warned about the mosquito situation. Everywhere, look, look, look. There are mosquitoes out here already in the open ocean. I just felt something in my left nostril. Oh my! On me! A few minutes later, left nostril incredibly itchy. <laughs> oh, I 
we're going to be spending the next 10 days in the Great Sandy Straits of Fraser Island. And to be completely honest with you, I am slightly concerned for my welfare. Oh my God. Right now, the sailing season is quietening down because of the storms. So we're needing to get south ASAP to seek shelter. So we've got some storms on the horizon there. Putting all the cushions in, getting ready for some rain. Oh. So we are putting in some of our sails. You know what, let's drop the main and then we'll turn back on track and we'll pull the heady back out. Okay, we just don't want to be exposed to that weather because it can change in an instant. Try and put this main down quick. Make sure it's not flight. So we're in a good position now. If that squall comes through, we can literally just furl in the head sail and we'll be safe. Well, that's the plan anyway. Okay. So the pressure is now mounting a little yeah. because not only have we got the sandbars, the sail out, we now have a potential storm. It's really gotten a bit chilly all of a sudden. We're just approaching this anchorage. So we might get hit, cough a bit of rain. So we're going through the checklist. Hatches down, jackets on. How easy do you reckon it would be to come unstuck in here? You just have to be a little bit on the ball with the depths and tides and stuff. I mean, looking around, you'd have no idea that that's a sandbar just there. No. And over to the right too. But it's all on the chart. You just need to know where you are. And as we tucked into Moon Point to escape the northerly winds, we spotted another boat that had come unstuck sitting on a sandbar. Meanwhile, our depth was getting shallower by the minute. So these guys just over here, they're on a sandbar at the moment. The beach looks really epic here, it looks awesome. If it was a sunny day, it would be absolutely spectacular here. People said this journey of ours that we embarked on was going to be impossible, right? Obviously, John and I had never owned a boat before. We'd never had any experience when it came to sailing. But I wanted to have a quick chat with you guys because some people think that buying a boat, learning how to sail is impossible. I think with hard work, dedication, communication, is a must. It has been difficult sometimes. John and I have definitely felt like we wanted to throw each other overboard multiple times through um, throughout this trip over the past six months. John, have you seen all the mosquitoes on our bed? Uh, <sighs> How the hell are we going to pick them up? <laughs> Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> They're just... Oh. <laughs> on walls, on our bed. And if you think that's gross, oh my goodness. What just happened? God damn it. What happened? My, my mouth guard went in the toilet. How did that happen? It dropped in the toilet. I put my hand in the toilet to fish it out. Good job you cleaned it yesterday. This is the worst night ever. There's one over here too. Let's just say we were cleaning and sterilizing into the night. Make sure we close the lid from now on. So we had a bit of a rock and rolly sleep last night. We're gonna get going because the winds have changed direction. So we literally parked up here for the evening and now we have to get ready to sail again. We're going to be heading just over to Harvey Bay, which is a short hour and a half sail. We'll have to park out a bit further, obviously, because we have a big piece of lead hanging off the bottom of the boat. It's a coastal town. It's a five hour drive from Brisbane that thrives on tourists, not only because Gari, Fraser Island is a stone's throw away, but humpbacks swim up and down the coast here from July to November. So we're just going to close all these hatches and get prepared to go. Okay. All right, let's get going. Before every sail, John and I have a bit of a routine. He gets everything outside of the boat ready while I look after the inside. Oh my gosh, my mouth guard. Packing away any loose items that could go flying if we heel over. And the galley, the kitchen is always riddled with projectiles. 
Hopefully that current gets too strong. The currents, tides, sandbars, choppy winds, we're not sticking around. We are out of here. The torrential rain, though, has made the waters murky. There was no visibility. I couldn't even see the anchor coming up. It's not ideal. We're currently going over the sandbar. You can see the colour difference. So it's pretty dark just there. And then it's all light through here. The colour is just completely different. It says we have about half a metre under us. Currently getting smacked by these southeasterlies. Are we going to make it out? That was a little bit nerve-wracking. So as you know, time has just been flying by for us. But during this relocation, we're really in the moment. We're not thinking about the past or the future. We are hyper-focused on the task to get out of the elements. We've been on board for a few days now, so we're getting a little tired. We're looking forward to discovering a new town where we can stretch our legs. But every mile south, it seems we're getting closer to civilization and we're a little unsure about it all because our senses are heightened and it's kind of confronting. So we've just rolled out half the heady, the head sail, and we're currently doing six and a half knots. We've got about 19 knots of wind. 22 knots of wind now. 22 knots of wind now. Let me show you how much head sail we got out. The weather is really starting to intimidate us because our boat isn't insured for cyclone season in these waters, in this stormy season that runs from November to April, so during the Australian summer months. To be covered by insurance, we have to be another 100 miles south of here. So that's why we're fleeing south, further away from the equator, where the waters aren't so warm and cyclones hardly form. These storms just literally come out of nowhere. Look absolutely nothing where we are right now so it's not like we could even check the forecast for this sort of stuff we've also never ever experienced cyclone season on a boat before so this is all new to us we're currently going over another sandbar obviously this is by <laughs> this area is called the great sandy straits sandbar is galore sorry it started to rain it's a bit gloomy I think we dodged a bullet. Hi. I think we dodged a bullet. We got one. We dodged a bullet. So we are about to go out for Mexican. Have tried to get my Mexican look on, but there is a bit of a problem because it hasn't stopped raining. It is absolutely awful and gloomy out here and we are parked almost a kilometer from shore so oh oh my gosh wow that was cool something is chasing those bait fish it must be something big anyway yeah we're gonna put our wet weather jackets on and i was wearing white pants and I realized that's probably not gonna be a good idea. So I changed it to black. Are you getting on the beers? <laughs> oh, technically you still have to be under 0.05 on a tender, don't you? We're going to be going out with Maddie and Chris. She's gonna be fun. Oh, torch. Torch. Yeah. All right, go and get it. Yeah. We'll be needing a torch to navigate our way back to Takana after dark. Yeah, ah! Here you go. How you elegant. Here. Oh, pretty flat, right? Nice work. But the waves are deceiving. Well, we just have to time it. Just go, 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 go. Oh my gosh, this is disastrous. Okay, am I just gonna go? Take this off so no one steals the tender or the outboard. Just makes it a little bit harder. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> How good a $10 happy hour mark. Nice. Oh. But as you're about to see, not all happy endings and well, coming up, we have the most intense close call with a neighboring boat. I said, I think you dropped the anchor a bit close. He goes, yeah. Yeah, 100%. We're anchored off the biggest sand island in the world. <gasps> Should we touch it? Join our Patreon crew for the early episode and behind the scenes. 
get rid of the fenders on the other side. 